Well, I'm trained as a medical geneticist, so as part of my training, um, we study um, uh, hereditary disorders, and this was one of the ones that we know about. Uh, but actually, my first direct experience with BWS was when I was working in Michigan in the 1980s at the University of Michigan. I used to attend a field clinic uh, with several other Michigan doctors, including Francis Collins, who's a famous doctor who's been head of the Genome Project for many years now. And we would see patients uh, in a public health clinic in different parts of the state several times a year. And we encountered Riley, I have the family's permission to give you that name, uh, who was a, uh, a, uh, a little child uh, who was brought in by the mother because uh, he had a um, uh, overgrowth and also a large tongue, which is one of the features of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Uh, we immediately diagnosed Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Uh, and screen for a tumor, which he turned out to have, and uh, we um, were able to uh, remove that and, um, and, and uh, cure him of his uh, Wilms tumor. But it turned out that Riley was part of a very large family, um, and we were able to then go ahead and do genetic studies to find out the molecular basis of the disorder, starting with his family. Uh, there, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. First of all, we really can only explain at the molecular level about 70 percent of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Uh, uh, there, there's still about a third of, of, of cases that we don't really understand the molecular mechanism. And we really need to figure that out. That's going to require more work in the laboratory to do. I think that's going to be particularly important in terms of using the testing for clinical purposes because although it's helpful for confirmation of the diagnosis, we can't really rule out Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome from the current testing because it still doesn't identify any abnormality in about a third of patients. So that's a very important area. Another important area is uh, we need to understand more about how these epigenetic or imprinting changes are transmitted uh, from parent to child. We know very little about that, what the mechanism for that is, and, and uh, exactly how that takes place and how we can identify that uh, in advance. And I think a third area that we haven't really even begun that's going to be very important is therapy and chemo prevention. Um, we know that uh, that epigenetic changes, like imprinting changes in Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, at least in the laboratory, are potentially reversible. And so uh, we hope that we can develop tools, for example, uh, either drugs or, uh, or other ways of reversing these changes to prevent cancer from arising in patients. Now, that's really a frontier. We don't have a good way to do that, uh, but obviously that's something we'd, we'd love to be able to do. Well, the most important thing that parents should be doing is screening for cancer. So we have guidelines for, uh, for um, uh, cancer screening, in particular for Wilms tumor and hepatoblastoma, and those should be followed closely. Uh, they should be uh, uh, done in consultation with a physician who understands Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome and the screening protocol and so forth. Uh, that's the most serious complication. It's the one that we're most concerned about. And, and we also know from studies that Dr. Dubon has done that that screening can save lives. So, so that's we consider to be the most critical thing to do. I'd also say there's a very important thing that parents should not do, and that is they should certainly never blame themselves. The, this is they didn't, they didn't go into the laboratory and create uh, epigenetic uh, uh, mistakes that led to Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome in their children. Uh, the the um, genetic changes occur by chance. In fact, uh, we now know that, uh, that in, in, um, bi in biology, in, in humans, um, there is um, an advantage to having genetic variation, and there are mechanisms that make sure that the DNA changes both genetically and epigenetically um, uh, over time. And one of the, the byproducts of this is sometimes there can be syndromes like Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome that we need to identify and, and uh, uh, minimize the risk of cancer and so forth and take care of the problems that arise. But you should certainly never blame yourselves. I know it's tempting to do, but it's really wrong to do that.